world, it's me, Brizzy, and I'm doing something a little bit new today. I've done plenty of cosplay videos, plenty of costume makeup-y sort of videos, but I usually narrate it as the character or do something fun and kooky like that. But for this, I'm doing the Lady in the Lake from The Haunting of Bly Manor, and there's just not really a good, fun, character-y voice to do for that, so I'm just going to be narrating as myself. And that is weirdly a little scary and vulnerable for me. I guess I like worry that it's too boring and I'm not doing enough like impressions or anything like that. So I just hope that it is enough for you. I hope that the makeup and costume look itself will be worth the view and the like. Um, I think the look turned out pretty cool in the end. I was just kind of experimenting and I like how it turned out. If nothing else, it certainly turned out pretty scary, <laughs> so there's that. I'm sure you could get a way more accurate version of the completely faded lady in the lake if you use prosthetics, but that is not my area. So I'm just going to try to get as close as I can to the less dissolved version of the lady in the lake. Uh, using just some basic makeup supplies and a glue stick. And if you're a fan of spooky stuff like this, I would love if you give me a follow over on Twitch where I'm playing only scary games f all of this month. Only spooky scary skeletons <laughs> allowed that may or may not bleed over into November. We shall see. But uh, it's very fun, cute, spooky, cozy vibes over there even when I'm scaring my butt off, so. <laughs> but that's enough of that, so without further ado, here is how to dress up as the Lady in the Lake from The Haunting of Bly Manor. First, the nightgown. Find a nice vintage style, lacy, long sleeve, long white nightgown. I will link everything I bought for this below and you can try to distress the gown a bit with a steak knife or some low grit sandpaper, but depending on the material and your determination or skill level, it may not be super effective. For instance, I don't think I was able to make much of a difference here, but that is okay. We don't need holes in this, we just want it to look old. So you could look into other distressing options like soaking in a bleach water solution, but for now, we're accepting that this nightgown is gonna look pretty much normal, but hey, it's also pretty shiny and white, so let's fix that. I boiled a big pot of water with three or four tea bags for a few minutes, then carefully dunked the nightgown into the pot. I stirred it around in there for truly less than a minute, just about 40 seconds, and when I pulled it out to check, it looked tinged already, so I carefully poured out that pot, wrung out the nightgown, and hung it up to dry. I didn't want it to be too brown because Viola's dress isn't exactly dirty, it's just not shiny and new looking. So now I'm going to work on a mask option for the extra plasticky, almost mannequin-like faded face option. This could work well if you don't want to block out your eyebrows later or you could do an early Viola look on your face and a later Viola look with the mask. So I took a blank Halloween mask and painted it a beige color with acrylic paint, quickly decided that it was too dark and pigmented and I gave it another layer in a lighter beige and I really probably should have gone even lighter and less saturated. <laughs> Next, I grabbed some crystal clear acrylic coating to give the mask a glossy finish. I wanted to make sure the paint didn't look matte at all. We want her shiny and wet like she just stepped out of the lake like Ariel, but less sexy. <laughs> I let it dry for a few minutes between each coat, giving it three coats. Then I trimmed the top of the mask because it covered too much of my hairline, and I gave it one final coat of gloss for good measure. Next, this is totally optional, but I wanted to experiment and see if I could give her more of a flat eye, no eyeball look and still be able to at least kind of see, so I took a pair of beige pantyhose and trimmed out a little eye window rectangle. I dabbed Gorilla Glue all around both of the eyes on the back of the mask and let it dry for a few minutes. Then I carefully stretched the scrap of pantyhose across the eyes and pressed it into the Gorilla Glue, which is difficult because obviously the Gorilla Glue goes through the hose and onto your skin, so this isn't <laughs> really recommended. Maybe wear gloves or something. I ended up using the handle of my scissors to press easier. That helped a lot. 
and I added a few more dabs of glue over the top of the hose for good measure since it would just sink through to the mask anyway and hopefully hold it more securely. And off camera, I ended up cutting a small vertical slit in the pantyhose right in the middle from the bottom where the nose of the mask is, just so that it isn't held taut against my nose. And make sure you let this whole thing dry for quite a long time, I would say over a day, especially to allow the glue smell to dissipate. You don't want that all up in your face. And now the makeup! Put your hair up, out of your face, and go ahead and put on some nice moisturizing makeup primer. Then grab a cotton pad and some alcohol and carefully clean off your eyebrows, making sure to get it in there and coat and wipe each hair to get off any possible grease that will make the glue struggle later on. Now, the scary part, <laughs> taking a washable glue stick, especially recommend the purple Elmer's one that dries clear, and swirl it against the grain of your eyebrow to coat every hair in glue. Grab a clean spoolie brush and slowly, carefully brush the hairs upward and flat against the skin, like a soap brow look, but more chaotic. <laughs> You've gotta be really slow and deliberate with this to force those suckers up there and leave no hair behind. Now that we've got them facing where they're supposed to go, we aren't going to rub the glue stick against the grain anymore. Only along the grain, only with the direction of the hair. From now on, the glue stick is only being pressed straight on and up with the hairs, reinforcing their position flat against the skin. So we're doing that once here and then spooling, is that a word? Spooling, that's hard to say. Spool, putting more spoolie, using the spoolie more a little bit for good measure. <laughs> then I'll take that cotton pad with water or alcohol or really a makeup wipe, but I don't have any of those, and lightly, carefully lick away any glue that gets unnecessarily far from your brows. Be sure to use quick, tiny swipes. You're not trying to leave a solid rectangle of glue on your brow. It should be a gradual decrease in glueishness. Now the waiting game begins. Allow those puppies to dry for as long as you can, and you can speed up the process with a blow dryer on the cool low setting. But try not to move on until you can lightly tap your hairs and no longer feel any tackiness from that glue. Probably five to 10 minutes to be safe. In the meantime, of course, you can move on to doing the same thing on your other brow. Then when you feel like they're both nice and dry, you can move on to the next coat. Carefully and firmly press the glue stick onto the brows and up with the hairs, giving them a nice extra coat. It doesn't have to be particularly thick. We're going for several thin layers here rather than just a couple of thick ones. Again, be slow and deliberate so that you can really push any stubborn hairs into place. Clean up any excess on the outside again with a cotton pad or a makeup wipe and give it the same amount of time to dry again until it is no longer sticky and you can move on to coat three. Do the exact same thing again. I felt like my glue stick was getting a little dry and not giving me much, so I licked my finger and swiped it across the glue stick to moisten it a tad every now and then. Again, we clean off any excess and we wait for it to dry. And then the fourth coat, the final coat. Do the exact same thing, painting upwards firmly and slowly until you've got beautifully thoroughly glued eyebrows. Give it five to 10 more minutes to dry and then on to some powder. I tried to use some peach pressed powder to help color correct my dark brows because orange will cancel out blue and that is just science, so don't question it. But I think a more saturated pigmented orange color would have been more effective. This powder ended up being kind of sheer at the end of the day, but it, it kind of did its job, I guess, maybe. I should probably tell you what to do with it, huh? Okay, so take a dry beauty blender or a dry makeup sponge and pick up some powder and press it or stamp it firmly over the brows, attempting to block out all the color. Try not to go too far outside the natural darkness of the brows and then lightly swipe away a bit of the excess on the outside, but don't touch any of them that are on your brows. I wasn't happy with the sheerness of the powder, so I tried to go in again with another layer using a makeup sponge, but it wasn't doing much. Oh well. <laughs> now to bake! 
taking a translucent setting powder and a beauty blender, scoop up a heck a ton of that powder and press it on top of the orange powder. This one can get messy and out of the lines. Just make sure that it's all up in there and don't disturb the brows. Now allow that to set on your face for five to 10 minutes before taking a clean brush to gently whisk away the excess. Hopefully the darkness of your eyebrows are less noticeable for you than they are for me at this point, but even if not, fret not, that shouldn't last long. Next, I am basically painting my eyebrows with concealer. You could use a nice foundation stick for this, but my foundation is expired, so here we are. <laughs> then with the butt end of a beauty blender, dab it on and blend it out, and go ahead and paint the end of the beauty blender directly if you want to dab on some more that way. Blend it all out across your forehead, around your eyes. Since my foundation is expired, I'm basically going to use my concealer as foundation. It's not like I'm particularly worried about looking fake or weird, so <laughs> be sure to also get your mouth with concealer. Grab a white eyelash primer and coat your lashes. I basically want to erase my eyelashes as much as I can, so I'm going in with this white coat first. Now with that translucent powder, go ahead and set the eyebrows even further and dust away any excess. Don't forget to get your neck with concealer or foundation so you still match. Now I'm putting concealer on a clean spoolie and applying it like mascara. The goal is skin colored lashes. <laughs> then just a good dab of concealer all across the eyelids and the eyelashes. Then set everything with translucent powder and grab some clear shiny lip gloss and carefully paint it over the concealer on your lips, trying not to lose the color of the concealer. Now an optional semi icky option. I took a face oil roller and gently rolled it all over my face, avoiding the eyebrows at first and gently patting it in with my fingers and getting it all on the neck as well. Then I will carefully dab just a bit over the eyebrows, but not too much because I was kind of scared that, that it would disturb the brow makeup and ruin all my work. So this will get you the real just walked out of the lake look and add a little extra spookiness. But if this isn't particularly comfortable for you, it is not necessary. Now extensions. My hair is kind of long, but it could definitely use a few more inches for Viola, so I took some extensions and drenched them in water mixed with a dollop of hair conditioner. We just walked out of the lake, remember? And then wring it out to make sure it's not literally dripping. Now spritz your hair generously with this water and conditioner mixture, taking it slow and getting all the layers and lengths from root to tip all around your head. For extra shininess, take some argan oil or something similar and again, spritz all over and work it into your hair. You could even get like hair gel for this if you want a really wet look for a long amount of time, but then your hair is just gonna get a little more crispy, so you know that's up to you. I'm going to attempt to get some form of waves in my hair with some salt spray, but it's, <laughs> it's gonna struggle to do much. Now to clip up your hair in layers and clip in those extensions. Don't forget to remove any random anachronistic accessories or hair bands from your wrists. And you are done! You are the iconic Viola Willoughby, the lady in the lake of Bly Manor, ready to sleep and wake and walk. You could pose with your eyes open or attempt a more blank-eyed look with eyes closed. The most effective, most terrifying look would certainly involve whiteout contacts, but I did not have access to that for this. And when you want the extra faded and forgotten face without prosthetics, there is always the mask. But yeah, fair warning, you can barely see anything through this thing, largely because this mask's eyeball holes are positioned practically on my cheekbones, but the pantyhose also do not help. So have fun being Viola, and Lord have mercy on anyone unfortunate enough to fall into the grips of your gravity. And there it was. That was my little Viola look. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm still not sure if I'm actually going to take this look out on Halloween. It's kind of a lot. <laughs> I'm considering being Wendy Torrance from The Shining for actual Halloween because I got take advantage of these bangs while I got them. But um, what are you being for Halloween? Please let me know in the comments. And also if you have any other ideas for what I should be for Halloween, please let me know. And thank you so, so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. You made it this far, you might as well. And I'll see you next time with a brand new video. Bye!